Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Corridor. And in partnership with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, we are so excited to welcome you here to Riverbend Farm for Maple Sugaring Weekend. Um, has anyone here ever been maple sugaring? No. You have? <laughs> has anyone ever made maple sugar? Made maple syrup? No. You have? Okay, so we have some experts here. I have um, not. You haven't? Has anyone e ever eaten maple syrup? <laughs> yeah, okay, so we have a lot of people who know what maple syrup tastes like. And we have one person who has made maple syrup. So you're our expert today, so you're gonna lead the tour. Would you like to come up and start the intro for me? Yes. No? Okay, that's fine. Um, so today we are going to be talking about making maple syrup. Does anyone know, can you guys tell me where maple syrup comes from? Where? A, tree. a maple tree. How do we get it out of the tree? Um, by like poking holes in the tree and then leaving a bucket underneath and it comes out dripping. Exactly. So we're going to go and we're going to drill a hole in a tree and we're going to collect something called sap. So is sap syrup? Yeah. No. So sap isn't syrup. Sap is made of 98% water and just 2% sugar. And what we need to do is we need to get down to that 2% sugar to make our syrup. So we're going to have to boil down that sap into the syrup. How we get the sap, how the sap is created, it lives in the sap wood of the tree. So you have the center of your tree and then you have around it the sap wood of the tree. And we're drilling into the sap wood. And so what happens is in, during this time of year, so early February to mid-March, we have a certain weather condition. We have cold, cold nights. So nights that are in the teens and in the 20s um, and in the early 30s. And then we have warmer days. And those, they don't have to be hot days in the 70s. We have our days that are in the mid 30s to the 40s. They are above freezing. Um, and so what happens then is when, the, when it's cold, there are cells in the wood that create um, suction. So there's suction at night when it's cold and it sucks all the sugar and all the water up during the night. And then when that thaws, it creates pressure and it's pushing that sap out of the holes that we're drilling in the tree. So last night it was cold and so we had that suction. It sucked all of the good stuff up up, 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 all up the tree. And then today it got warm. So we have really good pressure and it's pushing the sap out of the tree. So today we are gonna go and we're going to drill some holes and put something called a spile in. And we're gonna see if we can get some sap and turn it into what? Maple syrup. Maple syrup, exactly. So are you guys ready to go do that? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go right back out the door we came in and I'm gonna bring you down to our um, tree tapping tour guides. Um, and they're gonna split you into groups. So we're smaller groups going out to tap trees. Um, after that, you'll go and do our junior ranger programs if you haven't done them already. Um, and we'll have a station about climate change and then to our sugar shack. Yay. So we're gonna head this way. Tap a tree. What kind of tree do you want to tap? Maple. maple tree. We don't want to do these pine trees. They're a lot closer. <laughs> oh, all right, we'll do a maple tree. So how do we identify a maple tree? What do we use to identify a maple tree? What can we use? Leaves. The leaves. What do the leaves look like in a maple tree? Three or five points, depending on which one, they're, they're serrated lobes, they're not like round, flat ones. People use like Canadian flag as an example of a three one, but depending on which one you have, you have different sugar maples and some along the road that are sugar maples. We're going to do more of the red maples, also called sometimes swamp maples, which are down more in this section over here. So if you look for that type of leaf, we'll know we have a maple tree to tap it, right? We might have to wait two or three months, but we'll be able to tap a tree then when we can have the leaves, right? <laughs> Is there any other way we can do it if we want to do it quicker? Sometimes the bark of the tree, right? The bark of a maple tree, uh, red maples, which we'll be doing, are very rough on the bottom, furrowy, and then it gets smoother as you get higher up. The branches are much smoother. Also, buds at the end, they'll start, and usually this time of year, you'll start to get the buds to come out. The buds will be in groups of three, and they'll be reddish. And those are the those are the trees in the example of what we're looking for. So we're going to use that for identification more than the other one now. And also, 
Sometimes if you look, there's a hole in there where they tapped last year. <laughs> Who knows, man? They did the wrong treat last year because they had too many trees and they had to uh, do so much. So um, we're going to use that to identify it. So there's different ways to identify a different tree. Everybody knows, like, that's a pine tree, stuff like that. How about a dogwood tree? Anyone know how you identify a dogwood tree? By its bark. Get it? Dogwood by its bark? Well, I'm going to have to get another group here. <laughs> It's not me. It can't be me. It's got to be the group, right? <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. Let's go find then a red maple for us. You want to make sure a tree is big enough before you put a tap into it. Because if it doesn't have enough strength, when you're young, you take too much away from it, it's not going to grow good. It'll stunt it and, and not get more susceptible to diseases and stuff like that. So a tree needs to be 31 inches in circumference before you can tap it. So you can put one tap 31 to 57 inches around. If it's above 57 to 75, you can put two taps in. Above that, you can go three. You don't want to go too much more than that because the more you take out of it, unless it's a really big tree, you know, it, it keeps it healthy if you keep in those guidelines. If you don't go in those guidelines, there's more chance it'll be susceptible you're taking away the strains. Because this is like blood for them going up and down. And we need that blood for our oxygen. You take some of that away, it's all right, but you take a lot away and you're in trouble. So the same thing with a tree. We want to do that. So is this 31 inches around? How do we know? Do we just... Anyone bring a ruler with them, a yardstick? <laughs> no? Luckily, I have a thing with me. We have two different things. You can just, you don't want a hard ruler because it's hard to wrap around a tree, right? So you can either go to like Ikea and permanently borrow one of their measuring things or your little sewing things or whatever. But you have all these different contraptions you have. But basically, you're trying to go around a tree. Let's see if this is big enough for us. Whoa. What do you think? It's a full yeah. 36, 37. So how many taps can I put in there? Just one. All right, so we're going to put one tap in here. Now, do we want to put the tap up here? Why? It's a big heavy bucket, but it's full, and I'll have a sap shower if I spill it on me, so it'd be harder to deal with. How about way down here? I want to be way down here? No, because you won't be able to get a bucket in, or if you get snow or stuff, it's going to get buried, and you won't be able to deal with it, because you want to tap the tree. The season's about six weeks long, so in order to keep it there that long, you don't know the weather. for. I know they're good at predicting yesterday's weather, but they have trouble doing ahead, so they might not be able to tell you how, you know, how much it's going to last, and... It's gonna snow in the next six weeks. So you wanna make sure it's high enough. So ideally you wanna be about this high. You also don't wanna be near a tap hole from other years. Because if you're too close to that, this growth isn't, the flow isn't as good in those areas. It still flows, but not as good. So you wanna be, you know, two inches, three inches away if you can in order to get a good flow on there. So we're gonna tap this tree. We're gonna find a spot where it's not too bad and we're gonna tap into it and who bought the drill and the extension cord? <laughs> no, no extension cord? No drill? <laughs> well, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. I have a 7 16 inch bit here, and this is what we use to make the hole, which we're going to end up tapping the tree at that hole. So we're going to have this. And anyone wants to volunteer to help, because I'm getting old to do all this. Uh, Terry, we're going to have a few people who help us give a few turns of this drill, but we're going to look around and see where it was gone. Are there holes on that tree? There's what? There is. So we're going to go probably right over here. Looks like a good spot. All right, so whoever wants to help out, leave your bucket where it is. Just come up over here. You're going to do a couple of turns. Grab this handle. And you're going to do a couple of turns. Ready? Go ahead. Keep going. There you go. Okay, stop. The next person, come on up. Once you've done a few turns, have another person try it. Go ahead. Good, okay, that's good. Another one, come on up. Now we've gone in that inch and a half. 
to make sure we got enough to hold it in place. Now, at this point, somebody brought the little, there you go, you need to lose it, it's all there. Very good. All right, now we're gonna tap it in place using a hammer. Who wants to try and tap it in place a little bit? All right, you have to pass the test though. Do you hit this or these things? What do you hit with the hammer? This thing or this thing? All right, good. You pass. Come on up. You're gonna hold it there. Do a couple right on there, a couple of hits. All right, someone else? Come on up. Come on up. A couple of hits. Okay, next. Find the switch to turn it on to get the <laughs> sap. It's not flowing. We had some flowing earlier today. It all depends on the weather, what's happening. It needs to go, in order for sap to flow, you need to have it go below freezing at night to get that constricting, and then above freezing during the day or it opens up and it lets the sap do its flowing up and down. If you have a, it can be below freezing, but in the sunny side of a tree and you might get it to flow. So it all depends. If it doesn't go both ways at night, sometimes it doesn't switch, so you don't get it coming back up. So some trees we've tapped today have come out and some haven't. Um, this is unfortunately one for you guys, it's nothing coming out of there. When you do, it does come out though, you, know, you can put your finger underneath and people taste it and they'll say, oh, it just tastes like uh, for sugar. But reality, red maples are only 2%. So that means they're 98% water. Most people can't tell the difference between water and the sap coming out of a red maple tree. I know I lost my taste of chocolate, so it, it, I don't, can't tell the difference. A sugar maple is 4%, twice as much. So there's more of a chance you'll be able to tell the difference, but it comes out really clear, so you really can't tell the difference. Uh, from water when you first do. We collect buckets of it and you can't tell. Especially during the beginning of the season. When you get later in the season, it starts to come out a little more cloudier. It starts to maybe purplish, um, you know, yellow. Then you know it's the end of the season. It's not good stuff to be boiling out. You're gonna take the buckets mm -hmm. off. You're gonna take the tap out and you're just gonna let the tree rest for the next year. You don't have to put anything in it. It'll take care of itself. Like you see these tree cutters that go around doing all these different trees, right? They don't go around putting stuff on after they cut all these limbs off. The, the, if the tree's healthy, it'll heal itself. And the same thing with this, if you get a healthy tree and you're not over tapping it, it'll heal itself and be able to take care of itself from there. So now, if this was flowing, what do we want to collect it in? A bucket. You happen to have one. Did you bring that from home or we get? Come on in, hook that, see that hole? That's where it's gonna go right in that pot there. Perfect. Do we need anything else? Why do we want to put this on? So we, so it doesn't leak. Well, it won't get it won't leak from there. We'll still won't have much from leaking, but what does this keep out? Well, bugs can still crawl in these, plus a little bit of protein's not so bad for us. What are we trying to really avoid going in there? Rain and snow, because we said it's 98% water. If I'm gonna get more water and more snow in there, I'm gonna have to boil this thing twice as long. Is that gonna be economic? No, it's gonna be a lot more work, a lot more firewood, a lot more time. So it's not worth it. So if you know, even if you're doing backyard, you don't want a ton of water in here. So by putting this on, we're gonna keep out rainwater, we're gonna keep out snow, so you're gonna have a lot better chance uh, or a lot more efficient in your in your going down from there. Sap you collect needs to be boiled within a week. And you need to refrigerate it when you first have it. So and it, you keep as much as you can for up to a week in the refrigerator and then you have to boil it no matter if you're you know so basically if you got a season you got to boil it every week if you're doing it and you want to keep all the tree oh it's got as much um, maple syrup as you can out of the season a typical tap will bring you maybe 10 to 20 gallons depending how it flows and where it is and what time of the season you, you tapped into it which only amounts to about a third of a gallon of sap so it takes a lot because it's like 43 gallons of sap from a red maple to make one gallon of syrup. So it's a lot of work, a lot of effort. Um, I don't think anyone can keep 43 gallons in the refrigerator probably when you're until they're ready to boil. So you can end up doing little boils here and there if you end up doing that um, and working through that process. So 
depending on what time of the season you're getting the syrup from, you're going to get different grades. You know, you ever see the different grades? Sometimes one is more sugary tasting, one is more mapley tasting. So depending on when you're getting it, we'll give you those differences in the, in the grades. And that's how you identify that. Questions on what we talked about so far? Yes. Well, it just takes less boiling time, so it, it, how long you boil will depend on what you're getting with the consistency. Like, you have to really watch it carefully when you're boiling, because if you boil it too much, it ends up going like rock candy, it becomes very, very crystallized. You know, and as you go through the process, it's like maple tea, and then you have like a maple butter, or, or maple cream, I think they call it. Like, it all different levels, depending on how much you you boil it down, and how what you want for your end result. But if you're doing it to get the maple syrup, or, you know, for you know to put on whatever you want to put it on, you want to make sure it's got to be very careful at a certain temperature. Now, actually, when you have the big vat, you're going to be first just boiling it to get it boiling because it takes a long time to get it down to what you're doing. But when it starts getting closer to what you want, you have to really monitor that temperature closely and make sure you're getting it at the right temperature when you stop. Um, so, for example, when I did this home. I did it in a, a big thing over a wood fire I had out in the back, but then when I got closer to the end, I put it on a little Coleman stove with, with the small amount I had left where I could monitor much closer to the temperature. You know, like a candy thermometer or something like that would be put in there to get it to the right temperature. And then you get it to the exact temperature you want to know that it's in the best consistency. It's not too liquidy, but it's also not too crystallized. So you want to get to there. So you can use that to monitor it to figure out what you're doing. It, it takes a while to do that. First time I came here, you know, 15, 18 years ago, we, we did this. My, my son was with me, and we took him through here, and we did all this stuff here. Um, we boiled it down, and, and because we started later in the season, I think we had about a third of a cup of syrup to go on. Something, but we made chunky monkey pancakes, which was great, you know, because all the great stuff in it, so they didn't care what you are putting on it. Because sometimes you go through all this work, and the kids will taste and say, Oh, I like Aunt Jemima better. <laughs> what? That stuff? That's <laughs> strong. But, but it all depends. Some people like the sweeter stuff. Some people like the maple or stuff. You know, so it's a taste of whatever you want it to go with. Uh, in fact, my wife took a picture of my son tasting it. And if you look on the, when you get to the uh, boiling shack after, there's a different steps in step number six. And it shows him tasting it. Yet. Uh, and you get the end results there. But you can do this at home. If you do it at home, though, you want to boil it outside as much as you can because the uh, steam coming off is going to be sugary sometimes, so when you have that, you got to get it all over your walls and stuff. And if you're not the one cleaning the kitchen, okay, but if, if you are, you probably want to do it in a well-ventilated place or outside so you get to a very small amount and you only do a little boiling when you're inside with a lot more control. And you don't boil 40 gallons all at once, right? You get whatever size you pot you have, maybe it's two gallons, three gallons, whatever. And then you just keep pouring a little more in to keep it evaporating off until you get down to where it's no more going to work from there. Alright, other questions. We've got another tree we tapped down there which was flown before, so we're going to let you put your um, black buckets that you do for collecting it and bring that up then we're going to show you the next phase from there. But if you had come last week we did the maple, uh, no last week we did the chocolate trees. That would have been if you wanted to go with a chocolate tree. No, I don't think we do chocolate trees, right? But that, and next week we're doing for the adults the money tree. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, yeah. A little bit different. We use green stuff instead of uh, <laughs> the clear uh, sap that comes out of here. All right, questions? All right, we're going to go down to that next tree that is there that we have the bucket on. Okay, we'll find Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Good. Good. And then we'll collect your buckets once you've done that. Thank you. There you go. Good. Good job. So, um, and this will be the last step of the process. So what you get 
the sap that you've taken from the trees after you've tapped them. Um, they'll go into the evaporator here. Um, if you see that hose, um, so usually there'll be kind of a holding tank for the sap. Um, and it'll get fed through a hose in through that um, little connection right there and go into the evaporator. Um, as you can see, there are uh, partitions in each section. Um, each section has a little bit of a pitch to it. So as the fresh sap comes in, it'll kind of push the sap that's already been in that's cooked a little bit further along um, into this section here, which is where you kind of do most of the finishing for the uh, your final product to get the uh, maple syrup. Or uh, if you want to do a little more fine tuning, uh, this smaller unit here uh, runs a lot of propane and you can kind of get it to uh, where you want it. And the things you're going to be looking for are uh, color, uh, taste, and consistency. Uh, usually the higher grade maple syrups are kind of that amber blue, kind of light brown color. But a lot of people actually prefer darker colors because you get more uh, maple flavor and it'll be a much stronger taste compared to the, the lighter colors. Um, so typically, um, to make maple syrup, uh, you're going to have your uh, sap at 219 degrees. Um, and at that, you're going to be basically just boiling out most of the water. And then whatever's left behind will be you know, water and uh, mostly the sugar from the maple tree itself. Um, it is a little bit of a science to it. You know, it's not something where you can kind of set it and forget it. Um, it's you know, keeping consistently monitoring the temperature um, and going from there. Um, if you do get it too hot, you know, that's when the sugars will start to crystallize and they'll start to make more of the maple candies. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? How long does it take to go Um It varies a little bit depending on the condition of the sap, but it's an all day process. So Something like this, you know, as of right now, um, it's probably um, you know, 40 gallons or so. Um, even that's, you know, probably 10 hours. So take that 40 gallons of sap, um, you probably get about a gallon of maple syrup out of that. Uh, maybe a little bit more, depending on the sugar content already of the uh, sap when you tap the trees. But usually the Typical uh, common numbers, 40 gallons of sap. How long is that? So this is actually just water. Just oh, demonstration. Okay. <laughs> um, but you'll kind of start to see the color, you know, start to change. Uh, probably within an hour or so. You know, it'll be a much lighter color compared to what it is. Um, you'll get as you finish product. Um, and so this is. Uh, a little bit different to most of the home units where it's, you know, you're just cooking it in, in a single pan where this is, you know, meant more to be continuously fed and, you know, emptying it out. As this section here kind of finished moving it over to a smaller unit where you can kind of fine tune it a little bit. Um, so is it two sections being different temperatures? Um, they're relatively the same. I mean, this one, uh, this final one's probably, uh, going to be a little bit hotter compared to the other ones, um, just the way that the evaporator is set up. Um, but like I mentioned, like it's a lot of constant monitoring the temperatures. So there is a temperature gauge on the back here, so you can kind of figure out, all right, I need to adjust the flue for the stove or add more wood. Um, in these sections here, this is where you're going to do most of your boiling, though. Uh, there are actually bins that go down into the chamber itself where the fire is to kind of help the cooking process speed up a little bit more. Um, but for the most part, I'd say that's probably going to be pretty consistent for the uh, But in here, you can kind of get away with a little bit more variation because there is no water compared to where you're finishing the pot. But you want more of a 